All this week, we're shining a spotlight on cold cases, hoping to finally get justice for the victims' families. Tonight, we're talking about Natasha Ashley, a cheerleader who was brutally murdered 25 years ago. But are the people who know what happened covering up small towns' dark secrets? Grace White, looking for the missing pieces that could help investigators finally solve the case. There was something about Natasha. Popular, pretty. You just either loved her or you hated her. 19-year-old Natasha Ashley always attracted attention. She was a cheerleader. She just was wild. And she loved to have a good time. But the good time ended when the girl who grew up in Livingston went to a party in Shepherd and never came home. Once you've seen your sister's burned remains, no, you never forget that. Uh, uh, the next morning, a mile down the road from the party, her car was found, and inside the trunk, what was left of her body, burned to bones. They identified some of the accelerant as what they call drip gas. Tom Branch is the retired San Jacinto County Chief Deputy, who believes the killer may have used oil and gas wells in the subdivision to finish the job. You can actually get that product out of the oil well if you know what you're doing. What made that party so hard to investigate? With so many people there, you had to figure out who was there at the time. A party investigators say mixed with drugs, alcohol, and powerful connections. There were some folks at the uh, party that were uh, family members of some elected officials and others in, the, in Polk County. Initially, investigators thought they solved this case. They arrested two people for beating up Natasha. They even had a witness who saw them. But the case fell apart when he changed his story. We tracked down the witness. He's in prison. Because of your original statement, I think a lot of people wondered, you know, why did you recant? I can't say for 100 percent, but but the statement that I gave was, yeah, I, I did see her. You know, but but with with the amount of people standing around, it was quite a you know it was a circle of people. Anthony Cornelius is serving time for a separate crime: sexual assault of a child. The night of Natasha's murder, he admits he was on LSD. I think it was down the road is where where the gathering was. There's a bunch of people gathered up like on that side of the edge of the woods. He says he wasn't at the actual party. He was driving through the neighborhood because a friend called saying Natasha and another girl were going to fight. But he told us he can't say for certain who he saw. Well, I hope that they come to find out the information what I have given would be correct. It would make me feel better. Now on the 25th anniversary of her murder, the Texas Rangers are in charge of the case. And this old investigator is still hopeful someone will come forward. I feel comfortable that we talked to the person responsible during the course of the investigations. I used to bring my boys out here when they were little. Natasha's family and friends still hold on to her mom's dying wish. She said time and time again, this will be solved in your lifetime. And I strongly believe that. If only this small town will share its secrets. What, we just remember her in our hearts and let everybody else forget about what happened in our town? Mm -mm. You know, we've got to keep talking. We've got to keep praying. We've got to start hollering. Investigators told us they feel like this case is solvable. The Texas Rangers are highlighting her murder on their website. They've even upped the reward. It's now just a matter of the right person coming forward. Lynn and Mia. Certainly hope they come up with something. Tomorrow night at 10, a Sunday school teacher targeted, robbed at gunpoint in her garage, then dragged to her death. 30 years later, investigators think they know who did it. They just need help finding him. That's tomorrow night on KHOU 11 News at 10.